Hallo miteinander. I'm G86 and this is Rock Maiden 3. I name dropped this series in my Ghost Hunter Remu Let's Play and I was somewhat mocking its try-hard title. Rock Maiden, as in Rock Man. It's quite the stretch. Of course, when it comes to quality, that needn't mean anything. Maybe its third installment is pretty good. We're going to find out today. We'll be putting in a very simple password. Yes, passwords. In an age where I'm sure it's easier to program a save feature. All it does is allowing us to skip the intro stage. It's not too exciting a level and serves mostly as a tutorial. If you inspect this roster and know me a little, you'll discover a girl that I would never refuse to have in my videos. Yup, it's Hina 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 Kagiyama. I never thought I would get a Rock Maiden game, but the cast of characters sold it to me. Many of my favorites are present, Sakuya and Byakuren as well for example, and Alice is even playable. That, however, I did not know. The puppeteer is only unlocked when you beat the game as Remu or Marissa. Rock Maiden 3 is not just influenced by Mega Man in general, but Mega Man 3 in particular. Deviating from that, the moveset is that of Mega Man 4. Sliding was always a given, but we can also charge our standard attack, our buster, or Alice's magic, I guess. Also like Mega Man 4 is the fact that there are upgrades hidden in the levels and that those levels are replayable. I have found 7 collectibles so far, but we don't have the means to come across any of them during what I have planned. Still, it's worth keeping an eye open. Dropping past the spikes is a little scary, but not too bad. It's reasonable enough even if you don't know what's ahead. We unfortunately didn't have the item to reach the red flask back there. That's a weapons tank. We can hold up to four of them. They are not taken away on a game over and are even integrated into the password system. Once up here, we meet Eddie. I mean Nitori, definitely not Eddie. She may give us any item there is, including useless ones. We did not need a blue energy crystal. We have no sub-weapons yet. Tina's stage has a strong water theme. Unsurprising, my favorite Toho loves sitting in rivers all day. Among her slew of minions is the strongest fairy, Cherno. Very annoying opponent, her icicles will block shots. A little further, we find a blue potion. These are the valuable E-Tanks that you want to hold on to until you find a boss you cannot beat. The upcoming jumps are trickier than they look. It's so easy to undershoot and fall here. Happened to me several times in the past. Rock Maiden 3 is a tough game. Sometimes it's even a little unfair. Like right here. Exit into the room below at the wrong spot, and you are doomed to fall in the spikes. The developer Capricorn is infamous for sometimes malicious level design and enemy placement. In Rock Maiden 1 it's really going too far. So often will there be enemy spawn points put into places where they will collide with you mid-jump and bump you into a pit, unless you shoot them first. These moments where you can picture the designer rubbing their hands together and snickering have become rare in Rock Maiden 3. They are getting better at making a fun game, but such instances are still there. Another example? This game features Quickman lasers in two levels. Because people love those and think they're fair, not everything Mega Man 2 does is great. Please don't copy it without thinking. These platforms we're traversing are fine. You can kind of guess by instinct that they will flip over. They will do that on their own, so don't ever idle on them. 
Momiji Lakchirno is another Sniper Joe-esque enemy that shields herself from time to time. There are several girls of this archetype, Kwakuma and Suika are other examples. The stage is almost over. They are never too long and give you several checkpoints. Almost every corridor leading to the right sets a new one for you. Oh, the good old wily boss doors. Hina is great, she must be a fierce adversary, right? Uh, no, she imitates top men of all people. Being invulnerable while spinning is an advantage, but she is still the easiest foe in all of Rock Maiden 3. The timing to dodge her attacks is just not at all difficult. When bosses drop under half hit points, they gain a new move to weave into their pattern. In Hina's case, it's Lady Ogane's fire, something very reminiscent of Heatman. The corners of the arena are safe spots for it, so it's no problem. And that was a flawless victory. As a result, we receive Hina's powers. Ruke Ningyo sounds very exotic. Guess what it is? The top spin. It's slightly different in its technicalities, but it's still almost as crappy. Alice steals the same sub weapons from bosses as Reimu, but Marissa gains completely different abilities from each. It's nice, motivates to do more than one playthrough. Neither Hina's level nor herself were very threatening, but if you want to play through the game in a boss weakness chain, I don't recommend beginning with her. The person weak to Ruke Ningyo is Koishi, but her stage is nuts. You might want to wait until you have actually useful sub weapons before you tackle it. The starting point of my choice would be the vicious Yuka. Hard to believe, I know. I wonder who people are most likely to pick, thinking they will be weak. I bet it is Riggle. Jokes on them, I recently blew 7 lives in a row, trying to bust her duel oh so wimpy and puny Riggle. What is it with her actually being formidable in fan games? Yuka's stage is visually and musically very pleasant, another reason why I wanted it in this video. It's also significant in a metagame way. It's the stage I used to farm energy and weapon tanks when I foolishly used them all up. They're just up ahead, you need an item to reach the ladder, but from there you can get the potions and one of the hidden upgrades. And here's Sanae. She's the proto-man of this game, a not too durable miniboss in at least four of the stages. I didn't exactly keep count. Chen also makes an appearance. She seems to attack you somewhat accidentally, more out of clumsiness. Hard to say if she's really a minion of Kaguya. Kaguya poses as the Dr. Wily of the Rock Maiden world. A strange choice, maybe the developer hates her. A lot more fitting would have been Eren. She is Gensokyo's doctor and even has the same hair color as the aged scientist. Eren, however, is nowhere in this game. Maybe she's too mature to be part of Kaguya's silly plottings, whatever they may be. I do not know the backstory to Rock Maiden, but that's not necessary. It can be enjoyed for just the gameplay. On that note, I do think Rock Maiden 3 is often enjoyable. The bosses are pretty solid for example, there's a large cast of standard enemies and there are some cool sub-weapons. Even Ruke Ningyo can find a strategic use once in a blue moon, as I will show you. The Kidama racing along the ground are immune to almost all weapons, but top spinning, who would have thought, will get rid of them. Rock Maiden 3 is in my opinion strongest when it does its own thing, and it will do that at times. Not everything we've seen was a reference. The weakest moments are, like I said, those when it's too dead set on killing the player. 
The original classic Mega Mans were barely ever mean-spirited, were they? I'd say they just ended up tough in places, because they were often experimental. They aren't even that hard compared to many other NES games. If you watch some of the countless video listings for hardest NES titles, they rarely make it onto those. Mega Man 1 sometimes does, when people don't forget it happened, few have nostalgia for it. Mega Man 1 was actually a commercial flop, selling so poorly it jeopardized the making of its sequel. The developers supposedly had to plead for another chance at the franchise. So many enemies around here and even more of these white pellets to dodge. They only do one point of damage, they're mostly meant to annoy you, disorient you and possibly push you off a platform. Knockback is mercifully weak in this game, so long as you're grounded, you'll only stumble backwards a little. Here's a situation that could end ugly for the Reckless. I always destroy the Me Tool Kidama first, while avoiding to even step on this platform. Afterwards I jump, but only when it's gone past the spot where it spins. No risk that way. That mostly does it for Yuka's stage, so long as Lily White doesn't murder us in the name of Spring. Once again, not a very hard stage. My most dreaded of the first eight is Ichirin's. That one sky themed, has very little safe footing and lots of instant death. Yuka should be the biggest challenge of the video, I have had trouble with her in the past. You must try to jump over her as soon as she starts running, if you hesitate, she'll either jump herself or change direction as you land, either way you would collide. Once under half health, her thorn balls will rebound around the arena, only adding to the chaos. That won't concern us any longer, as we've already won. The fight might have looked easier than it was. Yuka is not to be underestimated, yet still one of the more buster duel friendly bosses I'd say. Our reward is the obligatory shield weapon. Not too bad for the kind of game Rock Maiden 3 is. Enemies love to swoop in from off screen, and a damage shield may save you from them. Okay, I think you've got an impression after these two levels. Rock Maiden 3, it's an alright game. I was thinking if I should let's play it and barely decided against it, I would have many nitpicks, more than in my recent projects, and that would make it a grumpy series in comparison. Nonetheless, I recommend you try it out. There is a demo. With that, I'm Gesheti6, this was Rock Maiden 3, bis bald.